the second time of me doing that. <laughs> it's still quite amazing. Alrighty. Welcome. Um, today I'll be showing you how to dock spacecraft in Kerbal Space Program. Now, I've seen plenty of questions about how to do it and just plenty of people trying to figure it out and being confused as to how to do it. So, today I'll be showing you pretty simply how to dock. It's a very interesting, it's a step in between, like you need that to go from the moon to other planets. And it is, it's a little simple, it it's pretty simple. It takes a while, but it's pretty simple. So, um, I'm gonna show you actually the two techniques. I'll show you like the simple one and then the more advanced technique. And I'll, I'll, I'll get into why they're different. But let's start with the simple technique. I'll be showing you just how to basic dock two craft together. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So the first step in docking two spacecraft is launching them. So the one that I'm gonna be docking to is already in space and is already orbiting at around 91 kilometers. But uh, this one, we're gonna launch up there and we're gonna dock. We have Jebediah, Bill, and Bob, the three crew. Also, make sure you check your staging before launching. It's very important. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. And let's fly. friction that should bring it down a little bit and uh, yeah let's circularize oh. and it's complete look at that all right so it's a little bit off but it's perfectly fine. You can see we have some residue rotation from that burn. We can just kind of work just a little bit. That way it'll stop any spinning. Now we need to work on our altitude. So you can see right here on the ascending node, if you click on the ascending node and add a maneuver, ascending node is just essentially where your rotation, where your axis is a little bit off. So we can just pull on that until it's good, until the node switch. Kind of like that. I think it's right. Yes. Now we can look at the maneuver. Now, as you can see from where we draw this, as you can see right here, it's a super short burn time, and we can actually make it a little better by decreasing the thrust limiter. That way, it makes it a little longer, and therefore, it'll be a little bit easier to to accurately determine the. Oh no, did they not? Oh, okay, never mind. Then. We'll keep it like this. So let's time warp. Let's go warp here. Yeah, never mind. Don't do that because that will cause uneven thrust, and it could definitely cause some pretty major problems. Unless you do opposite, I guess. Let's do like this one. Let's stop. Let's make this one like a forty-one, and if I make this one as forty-one as well, we'll have even throttle across it, and that way it will last a little bit longer. But it will 30, 30, there we go, so you see it's a 4 second burn, and so we start at T minus 2 seconds. So once again, we will warp, and beautiful, okay, for this, turn off RCS, because it, it's going to cause some issues when it fire, if it fires, so let's just burn, perfect. That's pretty good. Yes, we ran out of fuel, but it's okay. Actually, usually I try to not do that. Uh, how much fuel do we have? All right, let's actually try to fix this. So the thing is, I don't want to leave debris in orbit. And in this case, you see we have this huge stage that I need to dump. 
So what I'm actually going to do is because we're near the Apoapsis, I'm going to go retrograde, drop our Periapsis right, right below uh, 70,000 meters, and that way this stage will burn up in the atmosphere. So let's do that. Wait, actually, is that even possible? Oh, yeah, I can do that. No, let me pour... Here, let's actually do this. Let's, let's push it into lower orbit. Let's do that. Or actually, no. No, no, no. Let's play retrograde. Let's do this. And let's just... Do this. So you see our number, that number's going down. And also, we're going we're gonna to dock to the space station, which has some, some monopropellant in it. So let's keep on doing this. This is probably the dumbest way to deorbit, but hey, it works. So as you can see, our periapsis is dropping. Never mind, it's gonna be way too much to drop like that. I'm so dumb. <laughs> you can see how much thought went into this. You can see how well I planned it. But, um, yeah, we're gonna turn our ship around, and that way we're going to decouple it, and then we're going to boost it retrograde. Because, because we don't actually have any fuel left here. Or, Or we could do this. Let me, see, let me try this advanced technique here. I know we're spinning around a whole bunch of times. All right, so you see we're, as we're approaching, the thing is that right now I have fuel in this tank and I kind of don't want to leave debris, so I'm not gonna stage it quite yet. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put myself retrograde, which you see the RCS thrusters are already doing, and I'm gonna transfer just a tiny bit of fuel into these. So I'm going to go out, out, stop, stop. Perfect. That's just a tiny bit of fuel, and that should be enough to. Um, how much? It's not showing anything. Let's see. Let's see if this is enough to do over us. So let's fire. Good. Look at that. Perfect. See, we're under 60. We're under 70 meters. So that's perfect. Now what we can do is we can decouple it. Oh, wrong stick mode. There we go. Decouple it. go so now we got rid of that stage this stage is going to fall into the in, onto Kerbin and we can turn this guy back around and boost ourselves back into our orbit and we're gonna have a little bit of trouble bumping into it but I think it should be fine so I'm gonna bring this up perfect and we are quite a bit outside of our target which is over here so what we want to do is add a maneuver and we want to pull it in and do some stuff until we get a pretty good encounter. So what we want to do is mostly look at our those markers and see how close we can get them together. We do not want to look at one periapsis. And yeah, we need to play around with them until we get a pretty good encounter. Alrighty, so there we go. I have a quite a good intersect. Now we're gonna be going a little fast, but that's just because I want a, uh, a uh, what's it called, An intercept really really like quickly so I, so we're gonna go out really far and then come back in and we're gonna time it perfectly and we'll, we'll fly by really close to each other about 400 400 meters now I recommend under one kilometer for intercepts now what I had to do for this one actually I couldn't because we were on the outside of it we could actually do this so I had to go retrograde a little bit so I so my orbit was below the orbit of the space station and that way when I went when I made it go really far out it actually crossed it, and that's why we we're able to get so close. So you might have a little bit of issues, but if you if you're under if you're below in a lower orbit, then you'll be able to just pull prograde out until you get out far enough. Now, in addition, you can also just uh, set these up and just time time warp until you get close enough to each other, and then you can work on getting getting really close and doing kind of, some kind of burn. So anyway, I did this. The way to get really accurate burns, because this is like what not possible without accurate burns, is to change to maneuver to maneuver node here. And actually open up this usually it's over here you can open up this right here and this knob over here changes how big the the changes are when you drag on these and see so, so you can make really fine adjustments with this this is all in base game um, so it should, be, it should be definitely possible with that this is a recent update too that lets you do that but right now we are ready our burn is gonna be 19 seconds so we're going to line up with the maneuver node and we're going to warp near the node so we're warp here and now we wait just for a little bit and we'll have to line ourselves up get ready i hope i have enough um delta v for this 
enough fuel to do this burn, but I think we should have plenty. So we're gonna begin at T minus 10 seconds because it's a 19 second burn. And yeah, and don't be too concerned with getting it exact. I do recommend though pressing X as soon as you can and getting it as close as you can to the right amount. But we'll see. In addition, if you start earlier, you can actually just point in the right direction and then begin. And then you can use shift to slow yourself down and do a little more accurate because these these will pop up as soon as it as soon as, as, soon as it starts getting close. So let's see. We're getting close to the end here. So let me just press X now. And as you can see, the maneuver nodes are come, have come up. And so I'm going to do a little bit of this, firing until it gets really close. And as you can see, it's changing by a whole lot every time. Until it gets even closer. And then right now, what I can do is I can go right here, change the thrust limiter all the way down to around 10. Click on this. Once again, it's changing really slow, really, it's still changing quite fast. There we go. There you go, that's about it. Oh wow, we're getting really close. All right, that's good, perfect. So as you can see, it was going down and then it went back up. So we don't wanna do any further than that. And now we want to warp over here and we're gonna go all the way around and we're gonna go so slow. And as you can see, it's over here. And I believe this thing's gonna do two loops. Whoops. It's gonna do two loops before we even get close. And then here we are, we're coming in. And so now we'll want to warp uh, approximately here. We don't want to come in too fast. So now we can see there. All right, so first thing is we want to see how far away we are from that. Next, we want to see how, how much time we have. And then we want to point our rocket retrograde relative to the target. That way we are we see our speed relative to the target and we slow ourselves down. So we're going the same speed as our target. And now we will be matching the orbit. So. Let's wait for that to come. It's gonna happen in about one minute. Now we can do a few calculations actually, but using like that number right here and like the time, but I think what we should do is actually put this all the way back up. And that way we will have a really powerful burn to slow ourselves down as soon as we start getting close. So this is the point which I recommend saving. So by pressing F5, F5 will quick save. And that way at any point, if anything bad happens, you press F9 and you can try it again. So let's approach, we're getting closer, 37 seconds. And actually the number, the distance, might actually be smaller after that point. This is where the where this is where the orbits are the closest and, and the things are the closest. We might be closest somewhere out of this. So let's see. We're getting pretty close, we're traveling quite fast. And fire. Oh no, I should have probably done this a little bit earlier. Okay. Yeah, this isn't good, uh, good at all. We're really going to have to trouble, yes. So as you can see, it's taking almost 15 seconds to do this. So I think what would be the best... So right now we're going the same speed, but the issue is that now we're quite off. So let's, let's actually press F9 to reload that, and let's try this again. And we can see that it took approximately 15 or 20 seconds to complete that. So let's see. So, once, so this time we'll start burning when this is, says T minus seven or 10-ish seconds. And that way we'll be able to start doing it as soon as we start approaching. And now when we reach it, we'll be at a appropriate speed. So let's see. Let's actually start a little bit earlier. So let's see, we said 15 seconds. Let's try it, let's do that T minus 15. It should be quite appropriate. That way by, that way by the time we reach it, we're going quite slow. So let's uh, burn now. And what you wanna do is you wanna be consistent on these. You can see it's still going down, but it's actually going down a lot slower than I thought it was. So let's actually wait a little bit, wait for it to get a little closer. And... Now. I'm watching this number and this number at the same time, trying to keep them lined up pretty well. You see, see how close we are? It's actually changed the distance. Oh, we want to point retrograde. And there we go. Look how close we are. Uh oh, that was not good. Okay, so now I want to uh, point retrograde because we actually messed up a little bit. And let's actually turn down the throttle. 
Yeah, because we don't want to fly away from this thing, because we're currently doing that. So let's uh, do this. And you can see I turned down the throttle a whole lot. There we go, perfect. So now we're not moving, or essentially not moving. So let's actually, now that we're pointing to that, you see we have these, these target, anti-target. So actually what we can do is we can press target. And this is selected in the space screen. When you select where you want to fly to, you can select by targeting. So now we are pointing towards the station. And so what we want to do here is actually let's press the brackets, the square brackets on your keyboard. That will switch to your other, to any other um, spaceships nearby. Now let's see if I can find, okay, there's that. So you want to, be able to so you want to double click on that, that will set that as target. And now you want to select where you want to port, you want to dock this. You want to dock this thing over here to this port. So you'll click control from here. That will line up everything relative to this. And now you can press target. And that will rotate your space station straight towards that. As you can see, now that's facing that, and that's facing that. So now we are, everything's lined up. Now this doesn't have any thrusters on it, so this can't move anywhere. This just has to line itself up. Now this has electricity and stuff, and so it can rotate. However, in the advanced one, I'll show you what to do if this doesn't have electricity, and you can't do it like this. So let's switch to this. Now we're pointed in the right direction. And now what we want to do is we want to actually do a small burn so we can start moving towards it. So as you can see, the program marker is approaching the target marker. That's, that's what we want. We want them to be actually lined up pretty well. Now what we can do is we can go a little faster. And actually, this is a good point to f save at 5 because we're quite close. So you can actually speed up a little bit and then point retrograde. And if you're fast enough, you should be able to actually get pretty close. There we go. Make sure to all right, there we go. Slow ourselves down, and perfect. All right, so that's pretty good. Now we want to point, point towards the target, and now we will, first of all, open this. If your docking port is closed, is a shielded docking port, you want to open that, because you can't dock it if it's closed. <laughs> and now you want to turn on RCS, and you want to press docking mode. Now, if I press space, it'll change between linear and rotation. Usually you'll, you don't need to deal with rotation because you're already lining yourself up, but you want to use linear to move yourself around. So we are facing the right direction, so if I press shift, it will push me forward. And you can actually look at these and see which direction it's coming out to know which way you're going. So this will speed me up towards that, but we want to make the prograde and the target marker to be close to each other. So I'm using WASD to move that around and to make sure that you know it's lined up pretty well. So now we're coming in, we're coming in at half a meter per second. And you can see the number on here getting smaller and smaller. And it seems that we actually picked the right uh, thing. So let me actually select, I believe I already selected this maybe. Docking port says target. There you go, now we'll be pointing at exactly that. Okay. Make sure everything's lined up. It, it will drift, but that's just because you're in different orbits. When you're getting close, you wanna press control to slow yourself down. Now, I believe, I don't know the exact speed, but I usually try to slow myself down to around 0 0.2, 0 0.1 meters per second as we get really, really close. So let's do that. I can't actually see the speed because it's gonna cover it. Ah, uh, let me see it. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, there we go. Perfect. That's what I want. There we go. And even though it's saying zero, zero, but we're still moving close to it as you can see. And the magnets attach and bang. Super easy. It will take a little bit of time, and getting them close enough together is a little, a little difficult. But lining it up and flying towards it is pretty easy when both of them have control and you can rotate both of them. But what if, for example, on this station you forgot to deploy your solar panels? Or what if it's too big? That's when you have to work, and that's when you'd have to use the advanced technique. Now, the advanced technique is, as it sounds, a little more difficult but it's required for uh, later parts in the game when your space station is just, is just getting way too big. And it's a great way to, it's also good to know if your station's around out of electricity for any reason. So yeah, um, let's take a look at that. But that's just how you make, that's just how you dock pretty simply two uh, rockets together. All right, um, you can leave any questions you have in the description. And yeah, let's move right on to the advanced one. Alrighty, so uh, here we are on the map. Once again, we are making sure that we are intersecting with the inside of our target. But what makes this advanced is that our uh, the thing we're docking to 
it doesn't have any control. So let me show you. Okay. Well, anyway, this station over here, Space Station 1, let me change to it. It has no, no electricity at all. It's out of electricity and, it, and it's run by a probe, so it doesn't have any, any kerbals on it. So it's completely out, so it has no control on it at all. And so what makes this difficult is that you can't just have both of them point towards each other like we did in the beginner one. You have to kind of navigate around it. This is the second time I've done this, but we'll see how, how well I do. Because usually I make sure that I have plenty of electricity. But the main reason this will happen, you, will, you won't be able to control it, is because you either forgot to extend the solar panels and just like flew really far, or if you if a station is just really big in size. Because, you, because as you make your station really big, it's going to be more and more difficult to turn and to rotate because you'll have more more parts attached and it'll be more wobbly and it'll be less and less stable. So I'll be showing you how to dock to a station without rotating the station itself. Now we are going a little further away, but we're going to get close back together, and then right here is where we're going, where we're going to dock. So let's warp over here, and once again. Uh, we will, as soon as we get start getting close, we will point retrograde relative to the target and fire until we get real close. So let's see. So I, I want to keep, I want to see that distance, and I'll, I also want to see it here. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. And I mean, uh, I may have already said this. You, you can right click on the on the thing trying to target to get distance and stuff. And we see right now we're right now we're 4,000 meters away, which is four kilometers. And over here is where we're gonna where it's gonna get down to about 400, 400 meters. So we'll be really close. So now let's wait. I am going to stop and just wait for us to get close and wait for it to reach around 400 meters. And we'll see how close it gets, and we'll try to just kind of slow ourselves down near it. So let's see. Wait for the number to get down. Now we can see the, the station. Where'd it go? It was right here. There it is. Okay. We so you can see the station. You can burn a little more just to completely stop our velocity. Perfect. So first things first, we're going to point towards the target. Target. We're going to. So next, one of the things we're going to try to do is we need to be able to see uh, which direction we're facing. So if I push up. Okay, so you see, if, if, I'm, if I'm pulling up, you see it's pushing my thing down, I need to rotate 180 degrees. So, one first I'm gonna go, I'm gonna travel a little towards, towards the target. So I'm gonna rotate my rocket 180 degrees. Let me also pull up this so I can see how much fuel I have. There we go. And so now if I do this, it pushes it up. There we go, perfect. And usually you'll have these like black lines on your rocket that will show you which way is up, which way is down. So that's good. So now I have it lined up with the camera. So if I, so if I need to go up or down, I'll have that. So let's see. We need to twist push into docking mode and do that. And we are approaching our target. So yeah, let's just get a little closer and we will see. And then I'll show you how to, how to do the advanced docking process. All right, so here we are. And uh, we're lined up pretty well, but the thing is that we're pointing the wrong way, or like, or the rocket is pointing the wrong way. So let's um, let's turn around, and let's actually, well here, let's use RCS. How about that? Let's point the same direction, and let's just use RCS to push ourselves in the right direction. Let's put it this way. So let's not, not that way, this way. Okay. So now we're going to let's use stability assist so we don't like flip around or something crazy. So once again, I have it lined up. So if I push up, it's up and down and down. You can see because I line up the the uh, which we call it the hatch over there perfectly. Oh, we are hitting it, I think. Oh no, we're not. Okay, cool. So we should be able to. There we go. Now we need to point retrograde. And we need to boost it a tiny bit on the RCS thrusters. We seem to be traveling farther and farther from this. Okay, and this is the difficult part because because we are in different orbits, everything's going to be drifting a little bit, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to accomplish this. 
So now we need to move down a little bit. So we need to do this. Okay, let's see. But if we do a little bit of time warp, it'll stop everything from spinning. But it is a little dangerous because you're speeding up time. So it can be a little dangerous. Also recommend when you're using uh, RCS that you that you uh, go out. Or if, when you're using SAS and you're trying to line up things, go out of RCS mode. Because RCS usually is not going to be perfectly balanced on your ship. So we're going to move forward. And as you can see, our... Our ship is already is straightening itself relative to this, so actual rotation is going to be quite easy. Now if we can open the shield, now I know we're not quite lined up yet, but we can do this. So we're trying to move ourselves over here into this position, and that way we can come on get lined up pretty well and pretty nicely with this. We'll put ourselves this way, and then we're going to want to just slow ourselves down as soon as we start getting lined up. We're actually moving away, which is not optimal. Come on. I just don't want to overshoot it as well. We go. You can see we can we can move the prograde marker. It's over here on the nav ball, so we can move our prograde marker until we lined up. Now we are still a little bit off, so I'm going to move this way and then back up. And you can see, so I I moved it a little bit. And now we're moving quite slow. We're getting awfully close. We want to slow ourselves down a little bit more. And presto, we did it. So this is the second time of me doing that. It's still quite amazing because now, because you can see over here, you can see all of these are completely out of electric charge. And so now what we can do is we can open these solar panels. I mean, there won't be any electricity in there right now, but we can open our solar panels. And as soon as we get onto the light side of the earth, we'll start, we'll start getting electricity. And actually we can undock from this now because it's gonna get electricity as soon as it starts going around. Let's actually extend all of them because we're going to need to fill up those batteries all the way. So now that we have this station, let's uh, fill this thing up all the way with some model propellant. That would be pretty good. So let's fill up the station because usually I'll be using the station for, uh, for fuel and such. And so if you want to know how to transfer fuel, I put these three, which are these over here, and you just click out and it will evenly divide it among all of these. Perfect. So you can unclick these and they will disappear as soon as you click. Cool. Now this, uh, these all should be full of fuel because I haven't used these yet. Beautiful, okay. So this will have all the RCS fuel it will need. And yeah, that's it. And that's how you dock with a station that's that you, that you don't have any control over or it's just too big. So yeah, let's actually realign it. Because usually I'll go for a normal orbit so that or a normal putting it in normal direction so that it's not twisting as it goes around the earth and yeah that's how you talk the spacecraft thank you so much for watching um i hope this helped and uh there should be di my discord in the description to see when i upload new videos as well as a twitch where i usually stream ksp and a few other games every once in a while so uh, yeah thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time goodbye